professional development program for graduate studies at Charles Darwin University. Greetings to you. My name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University. And welcome to this Touchstone Progression Series, How to Increase the Speed of a PhD. And this was a major request from colleagues as it was announced that I was coming to CDU. And it was from supervisors, it was from students, from all stages of the candidature. Supervisors who were just starting out and wanting me to help students increase their speed of completion, but also people who are supervising students just lost in the middle of their candidature, just stuck. And of course, a whole series of supervisors who desperately have a group of students that are going to finish, but how do they help them finish? So this is a fast-moving training session, this one, for you, our wonderful supervisors. What I've put in place are 20 quick tips for a supervisor to develop a series of strategies and abilities in a student to make a rapid change and to complete quickly. So let's do this together. One, write all the way through the candidature. Assuming that a student can write up at the end is the path to madness. From the first week, ensure that students are writing. It may be a discussion paper for you. It might be a review of what the student is reading or just simply reinforcing what the student has read, taking notes from interpreting some ideas. And it might be interpreting two articles or five articles or ten articles in a week. And the reason we need our students to write from the beginning is we learn to write by writing and students improve their writing by of course writing ensuring that our students write all the way through enroll their throughout their enrollment enables a rapid rapid completion two find a community of experienced phd supporters whether a student is actually on campus or enrolled in their PhD online, we need to locate, talk with and learn from other PhD students. We need this peer support. Students need to listen to their peers, take their advice and perhaps even when the student is not listening to us about what's going wrong or what's problematic, they can actually learn from their peers. So finding these online communities, reading communities, writing communities, working with librarians enables a rapid completion. So we need our students and we need to help our students find their people and find their community. Three, supervisors matter. Here we go. The difference between the students that are trit and the students that complete a PhD is one thing, supervision. Therefore, we want students to research about a supervisor's career. We want our students to talk with other students about what's going on in our candidatures. So we need students to check our CVs, check our publications, check our timely completions and hold us accountable. If a student has a bit of a dodgy feeling at the start, it rarely gets any better. So a student's choice of supervisors or advisors in the North American system is really the key moment in determining the success of a student's PhD. So take the time at the start. Make a good choice, and if that good choice, that good relationship between a student and a supervisor is in place, there will be a really rapid candidature. So therefore, we as supervisors, we have to ask the difficult questions of ourselves. Are we worthy to supervise students? Why don't we all have a good look today at our own profile and ask of ourselves, Are we worthy of students to supervise them? Four, teach students how to take feedback. Taking feedback is tough, particularly if it's offered in some pretty tough language. But the best students hear the big critiques early in the candidature. So if supervisors or a referee or students' peers ask the big questions that are in fact deal breakers in a student's thesis, then that is the characteristic of a successful candidature because it's very easy to ignore uncomfortable truths. Our culture is based on moving towards the pleasant 
and moving away from the uncomfortable. But these early critiques about research design, methodology, theoretical engagements can save a student months or years later on. So we need to talk to our students about feedback and we need to train them carefully to listen to feedback and to implement feedback. Five, teach your students that small theses are the best theses. Keep the dissertation topic and area as precise, clear and focused as it can be. Get the research questions right and get them right and tight early and cut away as much detail as possible. We need to aim for strong, narrow, clear research design. Six, regular meetings are the characteristics of great and quick finishes. The characteristics of students that finish quickly is weekly meetings. This seems, I know, horrible for a lot of students and supervisors, but it creates an accountability cycle. A student has to front up with work. So they have to meet with a supervisor or an advisor. And that meeting doesn't have to be long. It can be via Skype, via Teams, via Zoom. And for example, most of my students, I meet via Teams or via Skype once a week for 30 minutes. But this accountability cycle and the iterative feedback makes the difference. And it makes the difference in the time the student takes to complete. The weekly meeting students and supervisors finish quickly. Seven, give a student a word deadline each day. Now, for some students, particularly part-timers or those with caring responsibilities and full-time work, giving a student a hard work deadline each day makes an incredible difference. For some people, it is 250 words a day. And I've seen students finish at 250 words a day. But I know students that make a point that they don't stop working until they've written 500 words every day without fail. And then they can relax. Professor Teresa McPhail stated that, quote, by the way, it's so funny, McPhail, I wish I was joking. Teresa, Teresa McPhail stated that, quote, because writing is thinking, brilliant thoughts do not just appear on the page after long hours of arduous musing on a subject. In my experience, the best ideas almost always come about through the act of writing itself, end of quote. This avoids the writing up at the end disaster. You know, I'm writing up my PhD that goes on longer than most Australian governments. So we write all the way through and it ensures that students remain connected with their thesis each day, which leads to eight. Stay connected with a student's thesis every day. Yes, and this one is particularly important for part-time students. I recently had a student in my office that was seriously over time. And she said to me, I've got just the introduction left to write. I've got just the introduction left to write. And I can do that in two days. I can do it in two days. And I tried to be as empathic as I could, but I also had to tell her the hard truth. I replied, and it was in October when I was having this meeting with her, I replied that the student has been trying to write that introduction since March. So something that she's telling me takes two days. The student actually hadn't found those two days in eight months. And that's the point. Hoping to write on the weekends or a morning a week, these commitments dissipate because there's always something more pleasant to do. And most importantly, a student loses connection with their thesis. So therefore, the best strategy is little and often. The best strategy is students remain connected to their thesis, even half an hour every day, a number of words written every day. And when students stay connected with the thesis each day, that is how they finish. Nine, there is never a perfect or easy time to do a PhD. Waiting for that easy month, annual leave, the Christmas holidays to reconnect with a student's thesis will never happen. There is no right time to do a PhD and every day, every week, every month, every year poses different challenges in a life. We must confirm with our students that there's never going to be a perfect time. We need to find half an hour and write now. Do not wait, do it now. Do not wait for a good time to read, read in the bad times. Do not wait for a good time to write, write in the bad times. 10. 
don't focus on the big picture. Now, I know this is an odd one and it seems very counterintuitive because all the talk is on the story of the PhD, finishing the PhD, the big picture. Actually, the best theses and the best candidates do something very different. They focus on the next task. What is the next job? Not the entire thesis. What is the next task? So every day, make sure our students are giving themselves one job. And we need to teach our students to do this. So students have one job that is small, discreet and controllable, and they complete that and they learn to complete tasks. Help our students, teach them not to be overwhelmed and to finish one job. 11. Make sure our students stop all social media notifications. To finish that job, a student needs to start that job and a student needs to concentrate. But if a student is working within reach of their phone or a student has those damn Facebook and Twitter notifications or Insta blinking on a student's screen, then they are going to be distracted and deflected all day. If a student can't do this, and there are many students now that can't do this, then I would advise, at least for a month, the use of app blockers like focal filter, self-control or cold turkey. And that will stop the notifications, allow the students to learn once more to focus on their work and to use social media in a different way, which is our tip 12. 12. Use social media as a study break. If a student doesn't want to block social media, then we need to find a productive strategy to integrate social media into our students' work. They must not leave social media sites up. So a student is flicking between their PhD and see if anyone likes their photo on Insta. So we need all to go to the sites And only go to the sites when a student chooses to do so. So give your student a deadline and a task and they finish that task. And when they finish that task, they can then go to Instagram as a break for 10 minutes. So what we're doing is we're controlling via task orientation a student's use of digitization to enable the completion of a student's thesis and then to enable leisure. So we must not confuse or mingle digitization for work and digitization for leisure. We have to be very clear on that differentiation and block those sites when a student chooses to go there all the time. They need to use it and change their use of it as a break in between their work around their PhD. 13. Recognize that there is never going to be a perfect time to do that PhD. So if a student is waiting for the perfect moment, the perfect week, the perfect year, it's never going to happen. And what they need to know and what we need to tell them overtly is dreadful things happen to really good people all the time. The PhD is three years in length and in any three year period in our lives, relationships end, people get sick, people die. So we must not aim for perfectionism. We have to aim to finish a task And the great researchers fight through the bad times rather than waiting for the great times. Persist. And when times are bad, don't procrastinate. Instead, we need to work through the bad times in a different way. And we need to show our students how to do that. 14. Use the library. Use librarians to gain information literacy skills early. I am always stunned when students say that they can't find anything on a topic. And it often happens in my office, I just can't find anything on this topic. And then I go to Google Scholar and I find for them 850 articles on the topic published since 2022. This is not sorcery, although I wish it was. This is not sorcery. This is information literacy. A student can save months, a year of an entire PhD program if they make friends with the librarian and they learn information literacy skills. The gift of digitization, the gift of open access journals is that amazing material is available for free and immediately. A student just needs to find the skills 
And the great thing is librarians have done incredibly intricate qualifications to help our students gain those skills. So information literacy matters. Get it early. 15. Oh yeah, remove something from a student's life. A student cannot add a PhD to an already full life. And I treat life like a bucket because I'm classy like that. I treat life like a bucket. And if the bucket is full, then a student can't add a PhD to it. So I ask a student, what are they going to remove from their bucket before they start a PhD? And this may involve a difficult conversation with a partner or friends, but we need to look at the shape of a student's week and explore what can be removed, truncated or rendered more efficient to enable a few hours to be found on the thesis. And this may involve, for example, a spouse taking your student's children to sport or to music. And if a student can negotiate the duties and the duty list with a spouse, then they can find the accountability and the efficiency required to do a PhD. So the importance of a PhD student's spouse here, we must never, ever underestimate. A family completes a PhD. Now, yes, these are temporary family changes, and therefore we need to make these changes in the short term with full transparency and accountability. And we as supervisors must show incredible gratitude to a student's partner, to their kids, for the sacrifices that they are making so that the student can do a doctorate. And of course, that's why relationship breakups are so common in a PhD. So we have to be really honest We have to recognise that a student's partner is suffering during this PhD as well. So we have to explain that if they're not getting these tasks done, then the the thesis is going to take longer and longer and longer. If you can negotiate the family economy in this way, then it means a student is able to finish quickly and the pain on the family is gone. So a student cannot allow business as usual to occur. And if a student's life is already full, the thesis won't fit. 16. Select a note-taking process or system and stick to it. At the start, we need to make sure our students have a system to organise their notes. There are plenty of strategies, but students need to select a system and stick to it. Use external hard drives to back up every precious note that students take. Back up everything. A student cannot afford to lose even a single day's work. So we all need to back up morning and night. Great note taking saves a student months of time. So when a student is writing, that note taking is just brilliant and allows not only information literacy, but really good referencing. And it also means that students have a database of research that they can use for the rest of their lives. That's what great note-taking is. But as a supervisor, we need to talk about this from the start. And the damage from losing notes will take months or years to recover. So note-taking, a system, and the security of that system is crucial. 17. Work out a student's best time of the day to read or write or conduct research. And ask your student this overtly, what are their best two hours of the day? And in those two hours every day, insert the student's toughest work. And that will create peak efficiency. This is a habit that will complete a student's thesis very quickly. It also allows a student to know what their worst times of the day are. And that's where they do stuff like adding references to end notes, spelling, checking student documents. So they know the downtime and they can align tasks to their peak efficiency. 18. Keep fresh in a student's drafting protocol. So much of research, particularly editing and drafting that research, is incredibly boring. But a thesis is finished through not only continual writing, but continual editing. Therefore, make sure that a student is using the full range of platforms to help them draft. Yes, the spelling checkers, the grammar checkers, but also drafts on paper. Print out student drafts and show them 
how print-based drafts can enable different sorts of editing. And also, you know, use bus trips, use train trips, use flights to edit up this work. Drafting on paper finds completely different types of errors than drafting on a screen. And for example, I always take, for example, a, a printed out draft whenever I'm getting on a train, getting on a plane, and that's my job during that particular trip. And also, and this is a key tip that's emerged in the last few years in the literature, and I know it feels a bit weird, but get the student to read aloud some of their draft, particularly the abstract, the introduction and the conclusion. And again, by reading these key bits of a thesis aloud, a student will find different errors and corrections. So it keeps the cycle of editing and drafting fresh. It defamiliarizes a student's relationship with their own words. So it's very important that they don't just read the same stuff over and over again because they will miss errors. We need to shake it up and shake up their relationship with words on a page and a screen. 19. Put a student's entire thesis into one document as soon as possible. This is the big one. It is the biggest relief for a student to do this. So the moment that a student can work off a full document, do that. Indeed, I tell my students to start <laughs> during their first meeting, start a full document, write a contents page at the start, and then through their candidature, fill in the gaps. The sense of achievement is clear, but also once you've got it all in one big document, the student can select the tasks from the entire project that suits the student and the time available on a particular day. And 20, yay, celebrate each micro success. Wow, this is important. The students that struggle just live in slog land. When a student is able to break up the big jobs into little jobs, the other great strength is that a student can have a series of successes and a student needs to celebrate each of these. So if a student has decided to write 250 words a day, then they celebrate that, right? If a student is reading five articles a day with notes, wow, celebrate that. So make sure students take a pause, take that moment and acknowledge their achievement of a task. Okay, so there we have 20 quick and dirty tips to save a student days, weeks, months, or indeed a year. But also, if a student is becoming a bit stale through their candidature, maybe one of these tips may freshen up a student, freshen up their relationship with their research, their reading, their writing. And we all know the mid to late candidature is the tough moment for students. And hopefully one of these 20 strategies will help keep the thesis moving, keep it secure, keep it fresh, keep it interesting. Thank you so much, as always, for your time, for sharing this conversation with me. And please feel free to contact me anytime in graduate studies at Charles Darwin University. Thank you for listening to Touchstones, our professional development program for graduate studies at Charles Darwin University.